Welcome back everybody, it's Chris Nichols here again for TCS TV. And you know, it's a very exciting time for mirrorless cameras right now. You know, we did just look at the brand new OMD EM1. We did that review, it was fantastic. But now we've got the brand new Panasonic GX7. And I know a lot of people are very excited about this camera. You know, you gotta remember, the GX1, that was, that was Panasonic's preeminent mirrorless camera, but that's years ago. We've been waiting a long time for this. And you know, it's been hard to be super excited about Panasonic's small compact mirrorless since then. You know, the GFs are nice, they've done okay, but this is what we've been waiting for. It promises a lot. Let's take it out and see if it can deliver on those promises. I do like the handling of this camera. I'm gonna say a few things. First off, let's start with the bad. It's not an ugly camera, but honestly, I don't find it that exciting. It is understated though. It does have a hell of a grip. It's nice and comfortable. I love the function buttons. Now, you know, Panasonic always used to use one function button that you'd have to push in to select. Well, now you can still do that with the back selector, but you've got dual wheel and it's very comfortable, makes sense. Control dial right here, nice and easy. And everything's got a quality feel. It takes a good amount of pressure to make it turn. So I like that. You're not gonna have any accidental changes. Pop-up flash, of course. Hot shoe, of course. I mean, these are all nice features, but here's a new thing, the EVF. 2.3 million dots, too, so it's very nice, high res, right on the corner, feels a lot like an NEX6, but you can rotate it. This is gonna be a really, really nice feature. And again, the screen rotates, too. I've already used that today. Overall, controls are fantastic. It is very, very comfortable. If you've used a Panasonic before, you're gonna have no problems using this thing. So I gotta say, you know, on this camera, I'm gonna try and let you guys hear this. I'm gonna get it close to the mic. Hopefully you can hear it. That focusing is super quick. I mean, I've gotta say, I think this is actually faster than the EM1 and I know Olympus is gonna hate me saying that, but it's true, this thing just snaps in. Uh, you know, we're gonna see later on if it actually catches, but it seems to, man, very quick, very responsive, no matter where I point it. So that's impressive. I am noticing that when I try to hold this camera, the eye sensor for the, the viewfinder is right on the corner of the camera. It is very easy to activate it and of course turn off your view. So you gotta be careful where you pinch this thing or I guess just do it one handed all the time. Not a big deal, but yeah, it's a little annoying. You know, I'm getting old now and uh, I can't just like lay on the ground and like bend and contort like I used to. So when I wanna shoot something like this, you know, the back screen rotating is great. But it begs an important question. Jordan brought it up too. You know, it's great that this viewfinder flips. I mean, you know, that seems like a good idea. And at first you're like, oh, it's awesome. But really, why would you ever use that? Uh, you know, like even on the GX1, when you had the flip screen EVF separately, I don't think I ever flipped it. So I don't know, maybe creepy shots where people don't think I'm looking at them. I'm not sure. I'm gonna try to find a situation where I need to use this over this. But right now the back of the screen is sharp. It's clear, it rotates just fine. I guess we're on a mission. You know, it's funny, we're here under the Tivoli Theater, kind of looks like a movie theater. This is my first job, man. This started out as a movie theater. When I worked here, there was a really trendy coffee bar and it was super sexy because I was there. Now it's some juice bar, who cares? Healthy's gross. But you know, you don't care about my past, do you? You care about this camera, so I'm gonna talk more about it. You know, one of the things I do really notice here, it's got a metal body and the thing is like solid. It's, it's a brick, it's got some weight to it, but it feels quality, man. Everything's really, really solid. You know, other things that I've noticed here too, this viewfinder, I did find, although I keep triggering it and it is annoying, you can actually turn the sensitivity down, so I dig that. So, you know, if you find that you're always tripping it, you can kind of reduce that. I also want to talk to you guys about the shutter in this thing, because it's pretty interesting. Now, you do have an electronic shutter option, and you even have a silent mode, so you can turn off all the lights, all the beeps, everything like that, and you've got this very quiet electronic shutter, great for sneaky shots with the sneaky viewfinder. But I also really like the focal plane shutter in here. We're talking 8,000th of a second maximum shutter speeds, and also 320th is a flash sync max. Now, that's pretty high. I mean, it's higher than most high-end SLRs, so very, very cool features. I don't see a PC sync port on here to do it with studio lights, but of course we do have a hot shoe so we could make it work. So all in all, a pretty neat thing. You know, overall the camera has got a lot of tech to it. It's got a lot of function buttons, but I'm finding it very straightforward. There's some cool stuff I wanna show you on that too. We did just uh, have a nice break. We went to the pub, we had a few beers, <laughs> some lunch, which is nice. 
not the steadiest right now, but I'm going to try an experiment here now. One of the unique things about the GX7 is this now adds in-camera stabilization in addition to the lenses that they have, which have stabilizers. I'm using the 45 macro here, and I want that because this has an older image stabilization in lens. So I've taken a few shots here, and just so you guys can see. So again, we're shooting 60th of a second, which for a macro up this close is ridiculously slow shutter speed. You can see here without stabilization, blurry of any kind. But when you look at in-lens stabilizer and in-body stabilizer independently of each other, they're actually pretty darn close. And you know, Panasonic say that. They say you're getting very, very close. That being said, I still find the in-lens stabilizer more effective. And a lot of the new lenses like the 12 to 35 and 35 to 100 2 8s, their stabilizer should be even better. Still, it's nice that regardless of whatever lens you put on here, you can have some stabilization. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now. I mean, we've got the built-in stabilizer, we've got the lens-based stabilizer. And the new EM1 that we tested has beautiful stabilization considering that it's in camera, but this lens is still giving me better image stabilization. I just, you still can't beat lens-based stabilizers, especially on the new Panasonic glass. It's very effective. Now we're playing with the video capabilities on the GX7. One of the nice things is Panasonic are claiming they got a brand new sensor. We're going to see what that's like in just a bit. But movie capability is very nice here. Having the manual movie mode right on the dial, having things like manual focus, autofocus controls at your fingertips, the touch screen, it makes it all very, very easy. You're not going to get the advanced video codecs that the GH3 has, but you do get good AVC HD. We're talking 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, both progressive and interlaced. You know, one of the things I am finding missing, again, no mic input, no headphone jack. We got a stereo mic on the top, but it'd be nice to have a mic input as well. Peaking is also good. We've got peaking on this thing, and you know what? It's, uh, it's working in video, it's working while rolling, which are all positives. It's a bright blue, which is a little bit offensive to look at. It's like really, really hard to see. It's distracting, but it's accurate. So that's a nice bonus as well. All right, so we're doing our ISO test here. And again, Panasonic do claim that this is a brand new sensor. The files do look a lot like GH2, GH3 kind of files. But anyways, we're going to do our ramp up starting at 1600, going up to the maximum, which on this camera is actually 25,600. Now again, we keep drawing conclusions against the EM1 from Olympus. That camera only goes to 12,800, but they did state that that was a creative choice they made. They didn't feel like 25,600 was going to be acceptable. And I mean, that's probably a good statement because looking at it here, it's pretty garbage. You know, from what I'm getting, as you guys go up to the higher ISOs, again, like all four-thirds camera sensors, you're going to get pretty rough around 1,600, 3,200 ISO. We're losing a lot of detail. Panasonic and Olympus certainly render it very differently. Panasonic still holds on to a bit of a grit and a coarse structure to it, which can look like detail. Still, I'd say honestly, these cameras are improved this year, but still neck and neck. And I still don't think you're going to compete with an NEX6 or a larger sensor. You know, it's funny, now that I come to my final thoughts on this camera, I'm actually remembering when I first picked it up. You know, I first touched this camera, I have to admit, I wasn't very excited. I looked at it, it was kind of plain looking, you know, I played with it a little bit. It just didn't have anything which was really amazing. But you know, I've really changed my mind because playing with this camera, it has got a ton of features and everything you want it to do just works seamlessly. Nothing kicks you in the face saying, look at me, this is amazing, it's incredible. It just is, it just works. You know, for the photographer, there's a lot of features here. I do love the function buttons. I love the customizability. They've enhanced the Wi-Fi. And you've got great things, like check this out. You can do curves on this thing. You're setting up your, your own color profiles and you can do curves and really customize it. It's smart. You've got excellent features. I do like having the image stabilization for the legacy lenses. You know, all the features here work great. It really does remind me of the Sony NEX6 in that, again, it was a plain, simple camera, but priced right with the features you need. This thing takes amazing photos, it's fantastic to use, and it's more affordable than the Olympus EM1 a camera which it stacks up very, very well against image quality wise. You get great video. I don't know folks, I think the GX7 is a real winner, but the only thing I couldn't find useful on it, I never found a way to get that viewfinder to be anything other than, I don't know, a fun talking point.